What is the clinical relevance of vitamin C among lead-exposed infertile men? Compared to controls, lead battery industry workers given 1,000 mg of vitamin C every workday for three months experienced a significant increase in sperm motility and sperm count, as well as a decrease in abnormal sperms, as well as a significant reduction in the incidence of damaged DNA. OK, but the ideal endpoint would be bouncing baby boys and girls. Enter this extraordinary little study from the University of Texas from over 30 years ago. 27 men with fertile wives, yet trying to have kids for years to no avail. 20 of them were given 1,000 mg of vitamin C a day for two months, and seven act as controls, no vitamin C. They followed up at the end of 60 days, and by then every single one of the 20 women became pregnant, 20 out of 20. Years of frustration, and then boom, 100% pregnant and not a single one of the women in the control group got pregnant. Rarely does one see these kind of black-and-white results in the medical literature for any intervention. Is the vitamin C just lowering the oxidative stress from the lead, or actually lowering the level of lead? Sure, antioxidant supplementation can have antioxidant effects, but may fail to actually lower lead levels in the blood. Now, this was in a group of lead workers that were breathing the stuff day in, day out, and the way vitamin C may work is to just block the intestinal absorption of lead. An earlier study showed vitamin C supplementation apparently cut lead levels by a third within six months, but that was with a whopping two gram dose with added zinc. Another small study found the same 30% drop with just 500 mg a day no zinc, and in only one month. But neither of these studies had a control group that didn't take anything, so you don't know if maybe their levels would have fallen anyway. It's like this almost too-good-to-be-true study on the role of vitamin C in scavenging lead toxicity from biosystems, by which they meant children. 250 to 500 mg a day of vitamin C for a few months, shaving hair samples every month, and saw up to a 69% decline in lead levels. So they repeated it in two other small groups of kids, and saw the same amazing kind of drops in every single child. But maybe lead levels were just dropping throughout the whole community during that time? Without measuring lead levels in a control group of kids not taking vitamin C, we can't be sure. Here's a good study to illustrate. Eight weeks of vitamin C and lead levels dropped in the blood and rose in the urine. So one could conclude that the vitamin C was like pulling lead out of the body. But the same things happened in the placebo group. Blood levels dropped and urine levels rose. So it had nothing to do with the vitamin C at all. That's why it's always important to have a control group. The same with studies that appeared to show no benefit. Uh, 36 battery workers all given vitamin C, no change in their lead levels. You know, but maybe their co-workers during that same time period suffered a big increase in lead levels, and the vitamin C was actually successful in keeping lead levels from rising. You don't know without a control group. That's why studies like this are so important. Vitamin C or placebo. Vitamin C versus an identical-looking sugar pill. And the vitamin C failed to help. Uh, that really put a damper on enthusiasm for using vitamin C for lead poisoning until this now famous study was published in 1999 that showed that vitamin C supplementation could lead to a decrease in blood levels. But check this out. Here's where the control group started, and after four weeks of taking a placebo, pretty much nothing happened, which is what you'd expect. OK, but check out the vitamin C group. Started out at about the same, but within one week of taking 1,000 mg of vitamin C a day, lead levels dropped 81%. So vitamin C supplementation may provide an economical and convenient method of reducing blood lead levels possibly by reducing the intestinal absorption of lead. See, 
the urine lead levels didn't change, so it's not like they were peeing out more lead to bring down their blood levels. But you know, most of the lead in our blood is in the red blood cells, which are recycled in the liver and discharged through the bile into the gut, where the lead could just get reabsorbed, unless perhaps you got a lot of vitamin C in there to block the reabsorption. Uh, but 1,000 mg is a lot of vitamin C. Uh, would something like 200 mg work, which is just like an, an orange and a cup of broccoli or strawberries? They tested that too. The 200 mg group started out about the same and didn't really budge. Bummer. So 1,000 seemed to work, but 200 didn't. Isn't 1,000 a bit unnatural, though? I mean, the RDA is only 60. Well, actually, we may have evolved for millions of years getting closer to 600 mg a day, 10 times the current RDA, because we were shoveling in so many fruits and greens. Yeah, but could you reach 1,000 mg without having to take pills? Sure, that's the amount of vitamin C, for example, that can be found in three bell peppers.